Okay, awesome. Um, it looks like we're live. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Product School Talk. I'm Cassandra. Um, I'm here with Product School. We teach product management, coding, and data, and now um, blockchain at our 14 campuses. Um, we have a really special guest with us today. He's going to talk to us about IoT um, product management. Uh, we have Daniel Elizalde. Hi, Daniel. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, Cassandra. Very yeah. nice to be here. Hi. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to everyone out there. Um, it looks like we have a presentation already to go, so I'm just going to let you take it from here. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, today, I'm going to talk about product management for the Internet of Things. Um, I want to introduce myself a little bit about myself. I am the founder of Tech Product Management. I help companies develop their IoT product strategy, and I do that by uh, advisory services or teaching online. And I also teach at Stanford University. I teach IoT product management. Um, but I have over 18 years of experience in product roles, particularly in IoT. So I've been doing IoT since before it was cool or, or the right thing to do. Um, I've had roles from uh, engineering manager to uh, manager of uh, big data platforms to APIs to developer tools. And my last role, I was head of product for a company doing IoT solutions for the uh, energy industry. So I'm very passionate about IoT and the product management profession, and I'm very excited to share with you some of the trends of what IoT means for us product managers. We're going to have some time at the end to uh, some Q&A, so I look forward to your questions there. So IoT uh, as a trend is something that we hear in the news a lot, but it's really catching up in a lot of different industries. We have devices that are connected to the internet in all sorts of industries from transportation to airplanes, energy, healthcare, smart homes, smart buildings, agriculture, you name it. It's, uh, it's pretty much in a lot of the products that we see today. And according to a recent study from Cisco, about 60% of the companies they surveyed are planning to have an IoT initiative in the next two or more years. So that means that a lot of companies are jumping into this trend because it is the next evolution of where we are with the state of technology. In fact, my position is that within five to 10 years, most products will be connected to the internet one way or another. This is a tremendous trend. And the interesting thing for us product managers is that it's an opportunity for us to jump into the next revolution of what's coming in technology, but also it's a necessity because as more and more products become connected to the internet, we as a profession need to be savvy on how to manage IoT products because it turns out to be that IoT products uh, are much more complex than any other type of product we've managed in the past. So we're running into a lot of issues with companies just stumbling and not having a solid approach to their product strategy or having the right skill set. So I'd love to share with you some of my experience on how I've approached IoT product management, what it means, and why I teach um, at Stanford and other of my courses. So I wanna just start by talking about what is an IoT product. Part of the challenge is that there's not a clear definition and different companies think about different ways and within the company itself, marketing has a different definition than sales and finance, product, engineering. So I want to offer a definition that we can use throughout the rest of the presentation. My definition for an IoT product is that it's a product that combines hardware and software. It measures real world signals and connects to the Internet to provide value to a customer. And I've highlighted a few areas here of my definition to point out some of the complexities and some of the areas where the value lies. So first of all, the first thing you see there is there's a combination of hardware and software. And that's one of the things that makes it really complicated. A lot of companies and even a lot of us PMs have experience either in hardware or in software. And when we try to combine the two, it turns out that it's a lot more complicated than we thought. And so understanding how to manage the whole life cycle of a hardware and software product, it's very challenging. And that's one of the 
things that us as a product discipline need to get better at. The next concept is that it measures real world signals. So that's one of the key attributes. Hardware now has sensors and can measure the environment, things like temperature, position, velocity, humidity, vibration, etc. And the key is if you have that data, contextual data around your product, what can you do with that? It's not about just reading the data, but what can you do? What value can you provide if you're able to gather that data? It of course connects to the internet, so it shares all that data to a centralized place. And then the last part is provides value to a customer. That's one of the key aspects of IoT product management. IoT product management is product management first, and then IoT is more a specialization. As you know, one of the goals, one of the key responsibilities of product management is to provide value to our customers and to our company. So we need to understand how can we leverage these new tools in IoT to continue to provide value. And the key here is that people don't buy IoT, they buy a solution to a problem. There's a lot of companies that are struggling with the adoption of their IoT products because they are leading with a solution. They have some interesting technology that they just tap into their hardware and they believe they're gonna provide value. So adding sensors to hardware and streaming data to the cloud to present that into a dashboard doesn't add any value at all. The way I like to think about it is how can we use these concepts to provide a better, faster, cheaper solution to problems that our customers already have? How can we leverage this next generation of technology to provide better, more cost-efficient solutions? So again, people don't buy IoT, they buy a solution to a problem. And if you live with nothing else from this talk, I want you to remember this message. So now, as a lot of companies are starting to go into IoT and a lot of product leaders are going into IoT, they struggle knowing where to start. And they struggle on figuring out what is the right strategy and what are all the different pieces uh, that fit into the puzzle to be successful with IoT. And that is pretty, this is pretty common. I train hundreds of uh, product leaders from some of the top companies, and, and it's always about figuring out all the different pieces of how the puzzle fits together. And so throughout my years of working in the field and, and doing consulting and training, I've developed uh, what I call the IoT Decision Framework, which is a structured approach to developing a cohesive IoT product strategy. See, building an IoT product is not necessarily rocket science, it's just that it has a lot of moving parts. And the ability to figure out how all those parts fit together, it's what's gonna differentiate you as a product leader to be able to bring these solutions to market. So I wanna take a, a few minutes to walk you through the IoT decision framework and explain to you how all these different pieces fit together. So the IoT decision framework has two parts. The first part is what I call the IoT technology stack. And these are five building blocks that exist in every single IoT product, regardless if it's a consumer product, an industrial product, enterprise product, if it is for the energy industry, healthcare, manufacturing, they all have these five abstract building blocks. And the blocks are device hardware, device software, communications, cloud platforms, and cloud applications. One of the advantages of having an abstraction like this is that now you can um, eliminate this fussy thing of what is IoT. You can say IoT is formed by these five components. And these five components form more of a solution than a standalone product. So when you think about an IoT product, think about a solution or a system. It's a combination of parts that uh, together provide the value. Now you can start seeing some of the challenges here. You have device hardware, device software communications, cloud platforms and cloud applications. Usually those are handled by different teams within your company, different engineering teams, different strategy teams, different um, uh, supply chain, et cetera. The process for managed hardware is very different than the process for managing embedded software to networking, to cloud. So the ability 
to understand the end-to-end -end solution, know the interfaces and how things fit together, that's what makes an IoT product leader. It's not necessarily being an expert in everything, it's just understanding how the pieces fit together so you can drive cohesiveness across your organization. So now that we have the IoT technology stack, the next part of the IoT decision framework is what I call the decision areas. And these are six areas that I have identified that are important areas where product leaders need to make decisions around their IoT solution. And these areas are um, UX, data, business, technology, security, and standards and regulations. So this diagram forms some sort of a matrix or a checklist that you can go through with your team and make sure that you evaluate all these different points in order to create that cohesive strategy. So let me walk you through each one of these decision areas to tell you the different things that you need to consider as you're planning your IoT product. Remember, th this framework helps us with the strategy of what we're going to build and this is before you jump into the development methodology. So it has nothing to do with Agile or with Kanban or some of the development methodologies. Those come later. Right now, we're focusing on what is it that we're going to build? So this is going to help us inform our strategy. From that strategy, we can derive a roadmap. And from that roadmap, we can work with other teams in the company uh, through the development and go-to-market of our product. So starting at the first decision area, the UX decision area. Here, uh, I'm not referring as UX as the aesthetics or the visuals. I'm referring to the discipline of user experience. And the goal is to understand who are my users, both internal users and external users, and what are their needs. IoT has the characteristic that it has a lot more users than other types of products. So understanding who are they, what are their needs, uh, it's going to help you figure out your priorities and your roadmap. And the idea of the framework is to ask who are my users and what are their needs throughout the IoT technology stack? Who are the users of my device hardware and what are their needs? Who are the users of my device software and what are their needs? Who are the users of my cloud platform and what are their needs? For a simple uh, consumer application, this might be um, uh, redundant. But if you think about more complex application, transportation, uh, industrial applications, the person that, let's say, installs the hardware in the manufacturing plant is going to be different than the technician that provides maintenance later, than the analyst that's retrieving the data, than the plant manager that's looking at the dashboards for insights. So all those um, users need to be identified, and then you need to track their needs. Um, the next decision area is the data decision area. So now that you know who are your users and their needs, you can think about what data needs to flow through the stack. And you do it the same way. What data needs to be acquired by the, my device hardware? Therefore, what kind of sensors do I need? What kind of processing power do I need? What kind of local storage do I need? What data needs to be analyzed at the edge, either real time or in batch? What other data do I need from other systems? Um, then going to the communications, what data do I need to send to the cloud? How much? How often? In the cloud platform, what data do I need to ingest, process, analyze? What APIs do I need to open? And then in cloud applications, what type of uh, data do I need to display to my user in what formats, in what frequency, et cetera? Now that you understand the users and their data needs, you go into the business decision area. And here, the goal is to understand how are you going to monetize your solution? What are your costs and your build versus buy decisions? And you do it the same way. For example, how are you going to monetize the system as a whole? Or are you going to monetize just the device hardware? Are you going to monetize upgrades into the device software? Are you going to charge for bandwidth? Are you going to charge for cloud platform storage, et cetera? So you have to understand all those things so you can actually build the business model that can provide the right profit margins that you want. The same way you can calculate your costs and build versus buy. One of the key challenges is that IoT is so complicated that companies can't build everything on their own. 
So managing an IoT product is a lot about managing an ecosystem, partner manager managing, vendor management. So understanding the core competencies of your company is very important. So are you going to build or are you going to buy the device hardware? Are you going to build or buy the device software? And so on. Right? So with this framework, you can actually go and check all the boxes and make those decisions together with your team, not by yourself, of course. Once you have who are your users, what are their needs, data flows, and business model, we can go into the technology decision area. And here is where you start thinking about what technology is needed to deliver that solution. Notice that we're not leading with technology. We're not saying we have this technology. What can we do with it? What is the experience we want? What problem do we want to solve? How can we charge for it? Right? It's the other way around. That's why the framework is laid out in this way. We start with the users. And then once we have users and business models, then we can talk about technology. And this is a great way to uh, start the conversations with your engineering teams, because that way they know what the direction is, what's expected in terms of cost ranges, et cetera. And then you evaluate that in the same way as we did before. What technology do I need for my device hardware, for my device software, for my networking communications, both local and um, wide area, et cetera. Once we know that, we can go into the security decision area. And security is one of the biggest challenges with IoT. You can't look at a news uh, outlet today that talks about IoT, not hearing something about security. So I wanted to build that directly into the framework because you should be able to go through the framework with your teams very quickly in a day or two before you actually go and build anything. Remember, you're building a strategy of what to build. And I want to make sure we bake in security from the very beginning. So now that we know what technology we're going to use, we can think about how we'll secure each layer of the stack. How are we going to secure the device hardware? What are the risks and how are we going to mitigate those? the device software, the communication gateways, the cloud platform, et cetera. And you can have a plan to mitigate uh, any risk that you have identified, and then you can make trade-offs of whether that risk is worth investing on. But at least you have a way to knowing all the different threats that could happen throughout your stack. And last but not least is the standards and regulations uh, decision area. And here, the, the important thing is to understand what regulations apply to your particular application, to your particular customer, or to your industry. Regulations are a big thing for us uh, product leaders because they can make or break a product. If we are in a heavily uh, regulated industry like healthcare or energy, um, then we need to be aware of that. And there's our features and our roadmaps need to be cohesive with the regulations, so otherwise nothing works. And so by having this as part of the framework, you can evaluate from the very beginning, what are the regulations that apply at my device hardware level, at my device software level, at the communications uh, layer in terms of data transfer, data privacy, et cetera. Right? So as you can see with the framework, you can actually have all these different things that you need to evaluate. And of course, the goal is not to give you the answers. The goal is to give you the questions that you need to figure out together with your teams in order to create a cohesive strategy. Once you go through all the decision areas, the next step is to iterate. And that is very important because the decisions that you make at each decision area affect your previous decisions. So for example, if in the UX decision area, you determine that the best possible experience is to have um, an app with augmented reality, that's great. But as you continue carrying those decisions through the framework, you might realize that you don't have the right data through the stack or that you won't be able to monetize that. There's not a market or the margins are too slim or that the technology is not there or that it poses security risks that you're not willing to take. So by looping back, and making sure that all your decisions are consistent, um, after going through a couple of iterations, you get to what I call a steady state. And that means that all your decisions are consistent with each other. And that's what makes a solid product strategy. The decisions about who are your users, how you're gonna serve them, data, 
monetization, build versus buy, technology selection, everything is consistent with each other, creates a solid product strategy that supports the overarching company strategy. And that as product leaders, that's our ultimate goal. Have a way to create this strategy, communicate it with others, and make sure that everybody's aligned on what is it that we're gonna build and why. So in summary, I believe IoT offers a huge opportunity for companies to provide new value to customers in a better, faster, cheaper way. And it also provides a lot of opportunities for us in product management to advance our career. Because as I mentioned before, most products are going to be connected. So therefore, learning the skills that are required to manage an IoT product are gonna serve you really well as you continue to advance in your career. On the flip side, not learning what it takes to manage IoT might actually set you back because all of a sudden you are going to be uh, not qualified for a lot of roles that require this type of ability. IoT products are very complex because they have a lot of different parts. They have five areas of the technology stack, they have hardware, they have networking, they have software, and then they enable a lot of different innovative business models that I, I go in a lot of detail in my courses, uh, but that's what makes them hard is that there's so many moving parts and very things that are very novel. So it's, it's interesting to have a way to um, ground all these different skills that you need so that you can actually make sense of what an IoT product is and how to go about it. And then last is that the IoT decision framework can help you as a step-by-step -step map to manage these decisions, work with your teams, have a way to communicate all this, have a way to have a shared language within your company of what is it that you're talking about when you talk IoT? Are you discussing which layer of the stack? Are we talking hardware? Are we talking networking? Are we talking networking security? Are we talking networking business? Right. So that way, it's gonna be a lot easier to convey your ideas and to get everybody on board because now everybody's talking about the same thing. Okay. So just to close, I uh, just want to thank you so much for, for listening to my talk. Um, there's a lot more information on my site, Take Product Management. Uh, I have a quick start guide there. If you're interested, you can download it. And it has a lot of more information about the decisions that you need to manage products. Uh, of course, my courses. And uh, you can still enroll for my one-day bootcamp at Stanford on uh, February 10th. So with that, uh, thank you so much. And, and I'm open for any questions. Awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Um, we did have one question come through uh, from Pratad. He wanted to know, um, does it apply to the non-IT industry? Yeah, the non-IoT? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can use a similar framework. It's just that uh, instead of having the five layers of the uh, IoT technology stack, you can just have, let's say, cloud and cloud applications. Right? But the decision areas, really those apply to any product. It's just that I decided in a way to expand that so that you can actually include the hardware and the embedded software, et cetera. But I've talked to people that just use a reduced version. And in fact, some product managers that are focused on IoT, but they just manage the cloud component or they just manage the hardware component. They just look okay. at their specific uh, line. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, and we have time for a couple more questions. So if you guys want to type them in here and let me see, we had another one come through um, as well. Let's see. Um, what advice would you give to somebody um, who's looking to break into product management? Yeah, great question. Uh, I believe that understanding what our role is, I think it's a the key uh, recommendation. Our, our role is to understand what customers need and how can we provide value to them based on the strengths of the company. So it's not about learning specific technologies or specific tricks here and there. It's about having empathy to customers, um, understanding the tools that are available to talk to customers, to gather information. And so the more you can do that at your current role, like let's say that you are in engineering, um, if you can visit customers and you can understand, uh, tag along with the product team on 
what is their strategy and why are we building things and understanding your market and how your company makes money and how mm -hmm. you're servicing your customers. That is what gives you the product mindset. And then after that, you can take some great courses like Product School actually, I think does a great job on uh, training product people. Um, Thank you. Um, awesome. And we had a, a couple more come in. So let's see. Um, here, this is from Igor. Are there any government regulations that will prevent from building IoT products? Um, great question. So I divided the in the framework, the regulations are per um, area of the stack. So each industry will have its own government regulations and you will have to observe those. Let's say that you're building smart solar panels. Well, in the hardware side, you're going to have to deal with the building code and the operator rules. And then when you start streaming data, at that point, you have to deal with like wireless regulation and you have to start dealing with privacy regulation. And so that's why you have to look at it holistically, but it's per industry. There's no one single regulation at this point. Um, okay. But regulations could impact your product to the point that it's not economically viable so they can shut down your product if you're not able to provide the ROI. Right. Um, okay, awesome. Um, our next question is from Kenneth. Um, how does customer feedback and user testing differ with IoT products in your experience? Yeah, great question. Customer feedback is always one of the most important things that we need to do. Um, there are different areas that you need to do customer testing here. So for example, if you think about the IoT technology stack, there's going to be customer feedback at multiple levels. Uh, so for example, let's say you're working with the end user, they need, you need to get feedback from them on the experience of the hardware itself, size, noise, temperature, et cetera, as well as the applications that you have in the different formats. So you just have to test more things and they are, they have to be done in a holistic way so that it actually the end-to-end -end solution makes sense for your customer. So you can do specific tests for each layer, but at some point you have to test the overarching experience. Right, okay, absolutely. Um, and we'll take one more question here. Let's see, we had quite a few more come in. Um, okay, this one is from Andrew. Can you describe the workflow that you follow specifically as their handoff of information or items that you found where different groups can work concurrently with in the framework that you provided? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, the way I do it is uh, I want to first start by uh, training everybody that's going to be a stakeholder in the framework itself. So everybody knows the different parts and then we can start dividing and conquering, right? So I can work directly with the UX team, for example, and the product team on understanding users and needs. And then I can work with data scientists to understand what kind of data they're gonna need for their algorithms. And then we can start working with the policy people to understand the regulations. And so you kind of branch out and then you have constant meetings to bring everybody together so that we can figure out what everybody has learned. And you are the, the traffic cop, you're the hub that's gonna bring all those things together to make a cohesive decision. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a multi-people, multi-team effort and, and our role as product managers for IoT is to be that that guide. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you getting to those questions. We had a few more come through on Facebook. So um, if we have some time later, we'll hopefully get to those um, within the comments uh, for you guys. And um, we'll make sure you get the link to, um, yeah, to download that guide as well. So um, thank you, Daniel. I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you so much for inviting me. This has been great. Uh, in this slide, you can see also my email and uh, my Twitter handles. So uh, let me know. I'd love to uh, hear from you. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you again. And guys, you can find more information on us at productschool.com. Uh, we'll see everyone next week. Thank you.